Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Beyond the Court, episode number 33. Thank you for joining us. Ellie, I know you had a busy weekend. Congrats to your daughter, Jordan, on her bat mitzvah. Uh, how'd it go, buddy? Yeah, it's been a busy weekend for sure. You know, the last few days of the week leading into the weekend as well. Um, it went great. Jordan did great. You know, we're we're, we're lucky with her. She's uh, She likes to complete tasks. You know, she likes to learn and um, she doesn't like to let anybody down, especially herself. So it was a great weekend. Uh, kudos to my wife for um, doing all the things necessary to pull off a Zoom bat mitzvah and uh, keep the tradition going on her side of the family of uh, uh, the Jewish belief and being a, being a part of the Jewish community here in Stockton and the temple in Stockton. So it's cool. You know, for me, it's it's a, a part of something that, that their side of the family brings in. And, and of course, you know, um, I, I love to get behind in anything that Jennifer's doing, really. And so it was a great weekend. Congratulations to Jordan for sure. Thanks. I appreciate that. And a fun show coming tonight. Yeah, we have, we have uh, you know, we have a great show coming tonight. We have uh, four real USA Racquetball members, you know, players. Uh, that's going to be Damian Zamorano from Arizona, Joey Logan from Illinois, Jeff Stark from Washington, Annie Roberts, and I hear she's with Aaron Slutsky too, so they'll be on. And they're here, you know, Ellie, to really help us out and give us their opinion and, and use their voice on USAR's recent announcement of the national festival they're going to have June 3rd through the uh, 12th in St. Louis. Yeah, you know, different voices, different locations. Uh, you know, Joey Logan's obviously in Florida, but he's from Chicago, really connected to uh, to to the era that we played a lot of Chicago events, you know, and is somebody that I always look forward to uh, spending time with talking to. Um, Jeff Stark is from California. He's from Redding, California. He did live in Washington for a long time, Oregon, you know, kind of had a rivalry going uh, going there with several players out of, out of Oregon during his time there. Um, so... You know, great players, good guys, Damien, and then obviously bringing in the junior in her final year with Annie. And, um, you know, we're going to have, she has, a, she has a guest too. She has Aaron Slutsky in town, who's another top junior uh, getting near her 17, 18 year old age. I think this might be her last year from St. Louis. So maybe there's some inside information there. Uh, so, you know, really interesting guests. And obviously, you know, you can't cover the wide spectrum of p potential guests and people have opinions about the festival announcement and good and bad um, with with our show, just one show. But, you know, we did a decent job here of uh, getting some good guests to uh, talk about it a little bit, both positive and negative. Yeah, we had to mix it up. We only thought that was fair. And then, of course, you know, after those uh, those guests and those racquetballers, we're going to have a guy named Kane who is going to join us uh, with a really, you know, I'm super excited about this special announcement as well. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know much about it. You know, I know maybe a little bit, not much about it. So it'll be nice for me to hear about it as well. You guys are going to get together and do something great. I, I assume. And I, I always like having Kane on just, you know, we get to talk a little in depth with Kane and, and uh, you know, we hopefully ask him the questions that people want to hear, hear about. And uh, who, that always interests me. I really enjoy talking racquetball with him. So, uh, you know, sounds great for a great show tonight and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll definitely be fun. So so with that, you know, we're going to get started. We're about to bring in Damien. But first, you know, I just want to say, Ellie, it's not always easy. You know, it's, it's almost impossible to please 100% of the people 100% of the time. You know, whether it's sports, life, business, relationships, there's always obstacles. You know, and the important thing is, is that we communicate. And, you know, discuss ways to improve and, and allow people to be heard, whether it's your wife or my wife or friends or business or players, you know, you got, you, you have to listen to that voice and, and try to come up with a way to make things better. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want. We always want the best for everybody. Um, you know, even if we don't want to hear that opinion or that voice, it's important to hear it, you know, and pay attention and listen up because there's, there's a lot of differing opinions, and it's not just what we're going to discuss here tonight. This is just a life, you know, life observation. Hopefully, Ellie and I and Scotty Mack, you know, we truly give the racquetball world, the friends and family, sponsors, supporters, you know, a platform to be able to, to share, you know, their thoughts and what, and what um, maybe they're thinking about in the sport, just like we are. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, we can, we can communicate that message for you. And at the end of the day, you know, we want what is best for you, what is best for the player, the member, the racquetball fan, the junior, because what's best for you ultimately will be what's best for the sport. So, you know, with that, Ellie, we're going to go into some video questions. You know, we've been asking people, send us 
some of your video questions, whatever they might be, uh, we want to answer them. I can tell you this. Yes, I have seen these videos. Scotty Mac is just throwing them out there. There's a bunch of them. Uh, so our answers won't be preset. We're just going to go with it. So uh, Scotty Mac, let's play the first video from, I believe this one is Julius Ellis from Stockton, California. What do you got? What's up, guys? Julius Ellis here. All right, Suds and John Ellis. What is your guys' favorite match you've ever played? Could be on the tour or just like for fun? Wow, Ellie, that, that's a good one. Uh, you know, man, my favorite match ever, uh, there's so many, I would have to say jumps out. 2002 US Open quarterfinals, Friday night, packed house. Uh, Jason Menino and I went, we battled it out and uh, that, was, that was good. But I gotta be honest, Ellie, lately it's, it's, it's the last one. The most recent one is my favorite. Sure, you know, I don't I don't blame you for that, buddy. You're still playing high level and looking to mix it up some more. So, you know, this kind of question is for those that are well beyond their 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 time on tour at that high level and that's not you, but that is me. So, you know, it's interesting. I, it could change, you know, I Julius didn't ask me this or anything before he went to the club that day and they had their practice and he asked that question, but it can change by the year. But, you know what? Like a favorite one of mine was our doubles match in I think 90 one maybe uh semis with you were playing with gelso maybe it was 93 uh you were playing with gelso in the semis and mueller and i and we were young and kind of just swinging away i'm sure there was plenty of balls left off the back wall but we were dropping bombs at high rate you know like the the the, the pace we were i was swinging right out of my body i know that i was swinging as hard as i possibly could but, you know quite often in the match and we've got we've got those photos where you're jumping on over one of my shots and then i'm jumping over and we look kind of the same and what it looks like we're way off the ground, which you probably were pretty high off the ground, but there was a decline where the where the photographer sat. So it even they were even lower than the court. So it even looked more radical with the photo. But that was one of my favorite matches for sure. I'll, I'll say that one for now. Well, all right. Yeah, that was a good one. All right. Second question. Who do we have? Hi, John. Hi, Zeti. I was wondering, what is your favorite serve and why? Ooh, Alondra, that's a great question. What's my favorite serve is anyone that I score a point with. Now, I know that might not be the answer you want to hear, but I would say my favorite serve, please don't tell anyone. And if you're one of my competitors, it would be definitely the crack serve on the left side wall. Use it in singles, doubles, and uh, super confident with it. Yeah, you can hit that, man. There, you know, there's times where you would just go on long, long runs of just trying that serve and cracking out a bunch of them and really frustrating your opponents and perhaps here because this dude can crack a serve. So uh, I don't know why you didn't just try that every single serve, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, maybe just, you know, a little, get a little tired hitting that every single time, but yeah, it's a good question. And again, you know, things change, you know, my, my favorite serve when I was 27 would be, you know, a, a hard drive serve to the backhand side, to the left side of the court, try to and keep it, was it a off missile. the back wall from hitting the side wall. Yeah, you know, have it be low enough to where it's like, you know, that's almost unreturnable unless you really guess over there. And they don't always happen, but that was my favorite serve in that range of 19 through 27, you know, right in there. Um, but right now I would say kind of just a high lob down the right wall, like Alvaro, <laughs> just kind of high lob. Try, if you can roll an overhead or reverse pinch roll it, fine, fine, George. But anything else and we're in play, I'm probably going to hit a pretty good ceiling ball at something if you are... If you keep anything low off the back wall, I'm probably not shooting anything. And I'm just going up to the ceiling and wait for you to either roll it or make a mistake and let me dink one because that's really all I got. But I'm good at it. Well, it, I tell you what, it'd, it'd, be fun down then, it'd be fun for us to play together because I'm shooting everything. I'm never going to the ceiling uh, and I'm definitely not dinking. And I've been on the receiving end of some of those drive serves when you get hot. And let me tell you, you know, sports, uh, racquetball fans, there's a difference. A lot of people talk about you know, who hits the hardest. There's two types of hard in racquetball. There's hard and heavy, and then there's fast and light, right? So the balls move different. Ellie's ball was super fast and light, and it just slid. You know, and there were times you're literally back there, Ellie, and I'm getting ready to return your serve, and I actually get a beat on it and kind of pick something up on your ball drop or, or maybe, you know, the racket angle when it's coming through the swing plane so I know where it's going. Still couldn't catch up to it. So it was definitely a missile, and uh, I would say, yeah, that was your best serve, not the lob to the right. Leave that one for Alvy. All right, 
What is the next question? Hey, Suds and John. My name is Steve. I'm a parent of a racquetballer. What advice do you have for me? How can I help better my kid to be a better racquetballer? Steve, that's a great question. You're talking to two parents, Ellie being a parent of a racquetballer. Uh, I could tell you that the best advice I can give to a parent in any sport is keep it real, all right? Keep it real with, the, with your player. Uh, and then, of course, also, you know, get them out there. You know, let them compete. It's okay to compete. Teach them to compete. It's okay to win. It's okay to lose. You know, it's more important how they lose than it is how to win, right? Everything's good when you win. But I would say, you know, keep it real with them. If they're doing a good job, tell them they're doing a good job. If they're doing a bad job, tell them they're doing a bad job. Don't tell them they're the best if they're not the best. Tell them they need to improve and what they might need to do. And then, of course, as parents, we want to do, Ellie, everything we can to help our children. So, Steve, keep it real and, uh, you know, get them out there. Let them compete. Let them get used to the, the winning and the losing. Yeah, I know Steven Rikus, you know, I know his son, Nathan, pretty well, uh, you know, a threat to be the 12 and under national champion. He's got some competition for sure, but he's a good young player, good kid, really works hard. And so, you know, we'll stick with what you just said and all that. And uh, I know Steven and his wife, Sarah, are doing a really, really good job and are dedicated to their son's success in racquetball and other areas of life. So just keep doing what you're doing, Steven. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're making the first right move, which is he's playing racquetball. That's awesome. It's going to make him better in life and everything. All right. So, Ellie, with that, we are going to get to our first guest of the evening. Thank you for your questions. Keep sending them in. Selfie videos just like that. Just your name, where you're from, what your question is. And, and Ellie and I love it. All right. We are going to bring in Damian Zamorano from Arizona. This is a USA Racquetball member. Uh, and Scotty Max is going to bring him in. Right about now. There he is. D Zamoran. I like it. Marcus DeRozan. All right. Dame, Damien is connecting to audio. Now, usually Scotty Mac, we have all this stuff set up, but this is a little different, different approach tonight. Damien, can you hear us? All right. I can. Hope everyone's doing well. Doing well. Great, great to have you. I like your rep repping the ASU shirt right yeah. there, the Sun Devils. Yeah. A lot of great athletes have come out of there. Um, you know, I know you're busy tonight. I know you have uh, a family gathering, and I promised we weren't going to keep you very long, so we're going to get right to it. All right? Cool. I appreciate Dam it. Thank you. Damien, you're a fixture in racquetball, indoor and outdoor, USA racquetball. Uh, I've seen you at many pro stops. Outdoor racquetball, you're very close with the De La Rosas. Um, so let's get to it. What is your reaction and what are your thoughts on USAR's recent announcement about the National Festival June 3rd through the 12th in St. Louis? Oh, sure. Thank you. It's a great idea. You know, they, they're coming off a rough year, just like every other sport. All of us are anxious to play racquetball and they're trying something new. It's a whole new event, whole new venue. They've never tried it before, so I applaud them for, for thinking outside the box, trying something different, and, and being creative. You know, Damien, you've traveled to plenty of events. You know, you've came to Stockton and played one of our events. I, I, I know that I recall that and appreciate that. And so um, for someone like you, what are your plans in terms of the, the uh, singles and doubles? Or how, you know, if it, let's say both are take about a, a five to seven day span there. Are you there for the whole time and looking forward to playing both? I would like to, you know, there's a lot of other tournaments that take up a lot of time. World Seniors, the U.S. Open, they're all week long or so tournaments. So that's kind of kind of normal. Um, I know we're still waiting to find out how they're going to split up national singles, national doubles and juniors. But it was nice that they gave us a save the date so we can start to plan ahead. What are your thoughts on the split, though? I mean, what, what would you like to see as, uh, you know, somebody who's going to travel to a lot of national events here? Mm, that's a great question. I would probably like to see singles the first week or the first four or five days. I think it's June 3rd through whatever that Sunday is. Mm -hmm. um, then national doubles would be maybe Monday through Thursday, right. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe juniors. And I know they said they can overlap if they have enough, uh, enough courts scheduling, you know, they could even overlap some of the days. So there's a lot of potential there. Um, I've never been to the U.S. Open. Out of all the tournaments, hmm. that's the only one, only major one I haven't been to. So having a five-day-long tournament that singles and doubles, 
you know, that gets a little tough if you're looking to play two events in each, um, each tournament. So that's, that's interesting, Damien. I'm shocked at that, you know, because I mean, you, you've been around forever and, and you've never been to a U.S. Open. So nope. do you plan on going to both this year or no? I was supposed to go in 2020, had the tickets, had the rooms, yeah. but you know, something decided to interrupt everything. <laughs> so what's, what's the plan? Will you go to St. Louis and the U.S. Open this year? Uh, I would like to. It just depends on what's going to be happening, schedules, work. Okay. Uh, we're there. planning on going to the Denver uh, okay. World Double Singles, and that's a little close to to the National Festival, but that's already with um, uh, that that would be really close to traditional national singles, anyways. Correct. I'm just curious which one, if you had to choose between the two events, which which one would you choose? I mean, the doubles, you know, the World Doubles sounds great. It's an IRT IRT LPRT event compared to the USA Racquetball. Uh, and the efforts. pro mixed right in the pro <laughs> mix so but but so i mean because there's different viewing pleasures there as well it's not probably yeah. just not about your own divisions and everything it's probably what what you, you know, the difference of what you might be watching as well so if you had to choose one if i had to choose one it would be the national festival it is a national title cool very uh, good damien that that's that's awesome that's perfect it's a great great lead off and we are now going to let you go because I know there's some party you got going on over there. Uh, I, I wish it was that much fun. <laughs> hey, you, before you go, are you playing some racquetball these days? Are you indoor? Are you getting to play indoor? Yes. Uh, we're fortunate. One of our friends has a uh, court in their house. Oh, I know Sudsy was, uh, was lucky enough to play out here, uh, playing the court in the late 90s when we had um, one of the world championships at City Square. But um, one of our other local clubs just starting, uh, just started to allow singles. So we've been playing there a little bit. Well, that's great. Yeah. Glad that that's great. the case for you guys. You guys hey. get, get, get ready for that Denver event and the other events coming up. So that's great. Yep. Damien, before we kick you out, I'm going to ask this for Ellie. Nobody else on the show cares, but he does. Are you playing a lot of pickleball? Ah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> all right. No worries. We have a uh, bunch of brand new pickleball facilities nearby and they were open during the summer. Listen, Hey, just stay active. Keep some sort of racket paddle in your hand. I know you're yep. close with Dan with Daniel. You know, my longstanding joke with Daniel right now is I'm not speaking to you until you're number one in the world in pickleball. So, <laughs> you know, you, you tell him I'll answer his text when he's number one, Damien, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And yep. uh, we're, we're going to bring in another guest. Have a good night. And we'll guys, have a good one. Take care. See you, Thanks again, Damien. Take care. Bye. All right, Ellie. So Scotty's going to bring in the next guest. There's there's about a 15 second transition. Yeah. The next guest is many of you know this individual. Ellie and I have known him for a long time. We've always had some good fun with him. A lot of laughs. Comes from mm -hmm. the great city of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, he has a, you know, he has a background not only indoors. He's been around forever. Uh, and he's now really super involved in outdoors. So Joey Logan from Illinois, welcome to Beyond the Court. Joey Logan, Scotty Mac. You know, Joey's living in Florida now, has been for a while now. So uh, we'll find out exactly where he's at in Florida. Quite different, you know, Illinois and, and Florida. So uh, uh, I know he's is. always true to home, to the Illinois home, but, you know, is definitely representing Florida pretty heavily these days. No way, Logs. Joey, welcome to the show, buddy. It's nice to see you again and always. But but let me let, let's get it right out right now. He definitely represents Chicago, Joey. If we're out and we meet, and I go, where are you from? Where are you? I'm gonna definitely say Chicago. <clears throat> as you should. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we we know you as Chicago. You know, Joey. A lot of people know you. You know, from indoor, from outdoor. Ellie and I have known you for many many years. Uh, you know, you're, you're a fixture in our sport. You have a ton of experience. You're a USA Racquetball member. You, you've been at, at countless events. You know, so let's get right to it. Joey, what is your reaction of the USAR's National Festival announcement June 3rd through the 12th in St. Louis? It caught me by surprise. Then that was my first reaction. Then... I thought about it a little bit more and then I was a little bit disappointed because one, it interferes with another event during that time. And then I think about it, it's like, 
why are we mashing two events together? Well, actually three. I understand that national doubles would have been about a month ago. So just leave it there. Just we get it. I don't know. They're not giving us enough detail to say why are they doing this. So I'm kind of like, why? So when you see is ASU not going to have us back next year? So by, by them not giving us information up front, it just makes me wonder. It makes me think, okay, why are they doing this? And especially since I just hosted an outdoor tournament in Chicago, and I know the pressure that was put upon me just to get memberships. Is this just another way of getting all these people to come and play and get memberships? I don't know. So because they're not being forthright or coming out and telling us why is this event or why are they doing it this way? It just lets me believe like, you know, somebody say something because right now I'm not a fan. And plus then you have these, especially a national event, you can play singles and doubles. That's just a risk from the players of an injury standpoint. So there's just a lot going on with me when I come to think about this event. Jayla, what, what event are you talking about in terms of, you know, right on top of another? Are you mentioned, are you speaking of Denver? So I, no, not Denver. I'm speaking okay. of uh, outdoor tournament in uh, Virginia. Okay. And some of the players that I know play that event when you normally would play national doubles. So now they got to pick and choose whether or not, so, so is that, you know, am I going to the tournament in Virginia or am I going to St. Louis? So they should know these events, especially since they have taken over war, they should know what what events are happening. And it's just like, well, we're just going to pick this date. And it, I don't know, it just seemed like the planning is a little yeah. suspect, if you ask I'm, me. I'm curious about that because, you know, for some people, the lineup of kind of events is going to matter more than, other, than it will for other families or other people that are playing the event. But what would be ideal for you to to make you, you know, to make you want to do both the singles and doubles uh, while you realize that the juniors are involved as well? Well, I would, you know, <laughs> Ellie, I'm a little older now, so I wouldn't play both. I would pick one. Right. And that's in, and over the years, that this is what I've done. For now, when I go to tournaments, I play one division because after, after I play, I would like to go out and see the right. area that, and see what's going on and be able to mingle, you know, network and playing all these divisions. I just don't do that anymore. Yeah. So, sure. You know, say so now you got to pick and choose. And hopefully, I, I, if they come out and let us know the reason why they're doing that, I probably have a better understanding. I can make a better judgment right now to just leave it to me to be a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. And I don't want to be that way. Joey, I think it should be a little bit forthright. But okay, so yeah, like, like elaborate on that a little bit. What do you mean? Like, what would make you happy, right? Like, I started the show, I said that 100% of the time, and, and I know you own your own business too, you can't make 100% of the people happy. You can't. And, 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 but what, what could they say to you as a USAR member, a, a huge fixture? You have, you host events, you know, indoor, outdoor, you've been around for, God, over 30 years, I would, I, I think. You know, yeah. what could years. they, what could they say? that makes Joey Logan happy, you know, whether it's the format, whether it's, you know, what is that? Not so much even the format, even if they were to come and say, hey, you know, we don't know if we're gonna be playing at ASU next year. So this is the reason why we're gonna host this event together. We don't know if this venue or that venue is gonna be, be prepared for us due to, due to the pandemic. Understandably, we used to always know, hey, Houston was always Memorial Day weekend that week. We knew that up front until they started moving it around to where, you know, cause of, we all know it, the wire was turned down. Then you have the US Open. We kind of know when that is. We know when, when national doubles is, and that's around Valentine's Day. Now, all of a sudden you got three months, you're gonna throw two events on the players, probably that hasn't been planned and expect for us to play. I mean, there's just a lot of things that come in that's involved here. And I'm not looking at as a player and as even as a tournament director, the injury aspect of it as well. So, you know, let us know, hey, if there's no, if we're not going to have any venue, a, a venue for national doubles and this is the best that we can do. OK, then I understand it a little bit more. Yeah, you know, just a quick transition before we let you go, J. Lo, is, you know, tell us a little bit about your outdoor tournament. I think it's called the Fall Brawl. Is that right? No, no, my outdoor tournament is the Windy City Three Wall Brawl. Windy City it's Three the, Wall Brawl, that's right. Windy City Three Wall Brawl, Rainbow Beach. It's the only, only tournament in Chicago 
So we stand by that. All the other terms they say Chicago is not Chicago. There's only one term in Chicago, and that's Windy City Three Well Ball, August 13th through the 15th. There you go. So how many courts there? We have three courts. We only it's just doubles. We don't play any singles. And this year it's going to be a two-day event. This will be like year five for us. This will be our fifth year, and, and it's growing. How many do you think you can host? Like, what's a full tournament for you in those two days? I think I can do 100 people. Last year, we got 70. And But what I kind of fight with is, do I want to have host have 100 people? Do I want to have more than 100 people? Because people who come, they know. And they know what we're about. I know what they're about. Then we started getting more people. That's like, is, is do I want to deal with the headache? So... I fight with that, but you know, the, the beauty of it, of it all, I get to talk to all the other players and I get their feedback and, and that's how we make a decision for my, our term. Well, I'm as sure you, you guys- see, I say, as you see, I say our term. I don't say yeah. my term, it's our term because you know, I talk to the players that play. Absolutely. And you'll have, you know, I'm sure you have a nice staff that works with you to, to make it comfortable for you. So you can have a decent time as well as, you know, running the event, trying to do the best you can to host a great event. Um, so, yeah, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll look forward to seeing more more about that uh, as it comes out. And I know that's you know that problem of do I want it to get up to the highest numbers that we can actually have at you know in two days. Uh, you know, it's a good problem to have, and you guys will make a good decision on that because these are unique times coming out of COVID, and it feels like we're coming out of it a little bit in different states. And and uh, you might be have a lot of players hungry for that outdoor because they've experienced outdoor the last the last year and a half at leading into your event. And the beauty is that we've been growing yet. We have a lot of players that played and they have never played outdoors. Now they start loving to play outdoors now, right. which I really believe that racquetball needs to embrace all aspects of the sport. Sounds great, man. Well, I look forward to talking about that as we get closer to that event. It's a, it's a very cool, you know, it's a very cool event having it right there in, uh, in Chicago too. So it's awesome. Thanks, Ali. Appreciate you, man. Yep, you yeah, too, Joey, Joey, we'll definitely work, you know, getting you back out here and, and discussing your event prior to it. And I just want to say thank you very much for all that you do and that you've done. You know, I know that, you know, you support the sport, not only by having events, but you, you've been a big part of it. And, and I appreciate that personally. And it's always great to see you. So hopefully I see you at as many events as possible this year. See you soon, now. fellas. Stay safe. Yeah, you too, Joe. Thanks, buddy. Talk thank to you. All right. All right. Okay. All right, Ellie, Joey, just another great guy. We're going to, Scotty Mack is going to transition now. We're going to bring in. We're rolling the uh, dice here. If you just saw Scotty's message, you know, he's, he's got two in, in the, uh, in the queue here. And, and oh, I uh, see that. Yeah, I, I see you that know, message. We're hoping he brings in Stark, but if he brings in Andy, we'll go with it. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, two counts in the waiting room. It is Jeff Stark. Yeah, All right. We, go. we got it. We got it right. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if he can hear us. Hold on. And he is rocking the NorCal iPad. I like it. No doubt about it. He's NorCal. True and true. He's NorCal. Let's see. I know he can't hear us yet, so I'm not going to ask, can you hear us? You know, I, mean, I saw Jeff for the first time when I was seven at the Junior Nationals, I believe 1980, Redding, California, his home club. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was, he was, a, he was, a, he was a player to be reckoned with in the 10 and under. I think he made the semis that year and had a great run and um, was, you know, awesome player. He's been an awesome player since even before then. Yeah, I can't wait for him to actually get his audio because he's never afraid to talk, which I love. He's getting a little assistance. I like it. I like it. I see a glass of red wine in there. We're going to do a little cheers. There you go. Cheers to that. Yeah, Jeff, you know, Jeff will, Jeff will speak his mind. If somebody pokes the bear a little bit, he, <laughs> he'll speak his mind. I get to see him play a little here in NorCal up until the COVID period with, uh, with all our double shootouts. And he comes through here and there and generally he's, right near the final, if not in it, um, you know, and the, every now and then someone who doesn't realize how long he's been in the game and how good he is, they poke on him a little and get him talking. And then he just, it's, it's kind of funny to watch. I know what's coming too, because it, it actually amps up his play. He plays better a little angry, you know, oh, he, I, he's, he, can I, you hear I, us I yet, Jeff? Can't can hear you. We can't hear you. This is where Scotty Mack is the gem. You know, everybody just so you know, kind of what goes on behind the scenes is that so, Jeff, you need to unmute. Scotty Mack said, unmute. Go to the little speaker thing, the microphone, and unmute it. Just a little click. He's, Jeff is way better on the left side in doubles than he is at 
getting unmuting. onto the Zoom here and unmuting. <laughs> All right, so Ellie, yeah, so let me tell you a quick story about Jeff. It was pretty funny, I think. No, nope. can't hear you. No, Jeff, we might have to kick you out, bring in Annie and Aaron, and then come back to you so you can unmute. I don't know, you know, what do the fans think? I don't want them to get, uh... he's got his name up there. Scotty Mack right now is bugging out, Ellie. He is not happy with this. I know that. <laughs> well, you know. All right. All right, let's let's. Uh, I, I was looking know, forward to the story. I mean, I, I enjoy a good uh, Jeff Stark story. I mean, he basically said that him and Rocky would kick me and Rocky's ass after Rocky and I won national doubles. So him and Rocky would beat you and Rocky. Right. Basically saying, I guess he's trying to say he would dominate me on the left side. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. So, uh, um, I'm gonna something say like that. that. No, he really, no, he really did. No, he really did say that. That was in Arizona. I'm like, not oh, surprised. I'm yeah, not he's surprised. Like, I, so I would have done this or that, or and I'm just laughing. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. You know, we got the Nash. All right. Um, so Scotty, it's up to you. If you want to kick him out and bring him back in, go to the girls. Sorry about this, everybody. But and don't forget, we got Kane coming too. Kane's gonna be in a little while. I'm gonna text him shortly. His Wi-Fi was better than it has been. I spoke to him earlier. Scotty Mack, you wanna you wanna boot him and bring him back in? Bring the girls in? That's your call, buddy. Ellie, look, I'm gonna make it look official, like we're on TV. Yes, Scott. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. I like the USA Pan American jacket behind you. That was amazing. Remember getting all those clothes? Yeah, I'm not sure which one that was. You know, I think that was a 1994 situation there, uh, World Championships. But uh, let's talk to the ladies here. Annie, can you hear us? Aaron? Yes, we're good now. There yeah, there's go. there's no doubt they were not going to mess this up. Technology, you know, like the, the junior girl, you girls still have juniors eligibility left? Yeah, we were just talking about that. Uh, this year is going to be our last year. So. Okay. All right, so, so we have Annie Roberts in the blue and we have Aaron Slutsky in the black. And, you know, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. You know, you're the future of USA racquetball. Uh, Ellie told me you're in Stockton, Annie, and obviously now Aaron, lucky you too, because what a great place to be at to train and play ball. You know, like if I was going to leave the country, I'd either come here to Ecuador with me or go to Mexico. But if I was in the country, I'd go up into Stockton with Ellie and, and the crew. So thanks for being here. And we're going to get right to this. All right. Yeah. For both of you. So recently, the USAR made their announcement about the national festival, which is going to include national singles, national doubles, and junior nationals. So Annie, we're going to start with you. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, no, I was super excited to hear that. I mean, um, obviously, it's not the, like, it's not exactly what the tournaments normally look like, but I was super happy that we found a club, found a time something to train for. I think that's one thing, like we were talking about, it's, it's difficult to train without knowing like exactly what you're training for, kind of having that in the back of your mind. So that's a super good, I mean, we're always finding ways to stay motivated in training, but that really helps to have that set. So yeah, really excited, really looking forward to that. So yeah. Yeah, Aaron, any, anything, anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say that I, the one thing that I thought was kind of weird, weird is how they call it a festival. <laughs> I just think that's kind of, <laughs> weird to describe it like that but I guess it's okay I'm kind of we were talking about it though we're kind of bummed because I mean we wanted to play in the adult qualifying but yeah. with juniors like that's top priority and I just don't think we'll be able to swing it with junior singles and doubles and then adult qualifying so, singles. I mean that's the big question for both of you is you you could potentially be looking at nine days ten days of play uh you know with the event's whole length if you were to play singles adult singles which you're both ready for I mean, at, at a high level, you know, the, the doubles and then, you know, roll right into the juniors. So why don't you think you can handle that? Too much play? Yeah, we just, we got to prioritize what's important. I think it's it's going to be such a competitive tournament. It always is. Juniors, adults, everything. So, like, you only have a certain amount of years to play juniors. So, and as much as we want, we both want that experience of playing the adult qualifier, uh, juniors is always the priority. But, I mean, who knows? We might be able to do, um, we might be able to do it all. But I think it was just, we just kind of liked having those, being able to focus on, like, all right, this is adult nationals and now this is junior nationals, but um, hey, at least we got some play, so that'll be good. 
Yeah. So, so a Annie, I understand and correct me if I'm wrong and Aaron, I'm not sure if you're going to, but you know, the big Denver event, the world singles doubles, uh, the pro mix doubles there is, is a week or two before the national festival. And I know there's actual like a thousand dollars in the junior division in Colorado. Are you going to that event? Oh yeah. Yup. <laughs> yeah, we are. I didn't nice. know that they had the prize money in the juniors, but no, I, yeah. I was actually super excited to hear about that timing because I think two weeks is like a great time to like get into a tournament, you know, get mentally prepared for getting back into tournaments. And then, so yeah, I really like the timing of that. So we're going. <laughs> you're both in, you're both in school. So how does that factor in, in terms of timing for both of those events? Is it, uh, are you done with finals prior to? Oh, oh yeah. I'll be done. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> by May or by the first week of May. So, so that's done. the beauty suds of, of the college student compared to the high school student is they're generally out by the end of May there when the Denver tournament's happening into June for the festival. So these two are ready to go, you know, and for me, you know, Annie, I see how much you play since you're here in Stockton and playing in Lodi a little bit. And, um, there's, you know, I know there's some moments of soreness and all that, but you do play a lot. I think you could handle all the whole damn festival. Just yeah. maybe have to decide on how many divisions in the, in the, in the adult singles and doubles, you know, and lay off of a two division type on one of those. But I, you know, I think in a lot of ways you feel like there's a chance if you were to play a bunch of racquetball leading in that you're as, as prime and ready to go for the juniors with your game as possible, or is it just too much as the, is, is what you're being nervous of? Yeah, I would just be nervous of um, just like, yeah, I think two division, like I feel like three divisions, like because I'd be playing, I have it like I'd be playing singles and doubles for um, for juniors. And I feel like just like I'd want to kind of focus on that one because the junior competition is no joke, too, especially like every division, not just 18 and under, 16 and under, like with the stakes that are high at that tournament, like you, you can't count anyone out. Like it doesn't matter if you've been on the team before, if you've never been on the team. Like, I mean, like Aaron, this girl, this girl, she came out of nowhere one tournament. I didn't know who she was. I have, she, and she ended up being in the finals and she had never played before. So it's like juniors is uh, something that I'd really want to focus on. And it, it can be pretty intense too, but yeah. I mean, so it'd be a different we, story if juniors was before adults. Then I'd play yeah, adults. Yeah, that would be interesting. So too. that's so yeah, so so I want to touch on that, Aaron and Annie. This is for both of you. So you know, because I hate hearing that. You know, Ellie and I both played a long junior career. We played many junior nationals. You know, we both transi transitioned into the U.S. team, and but like when you get to that 16, 17, 18, where you girls are, you know, like you're the next, you know, Ronda Rasich, or you're the next, you know, uh, Michelle Gould from the U.S. So because the event's so tight, you're not going to try to qualify for Team USA and Junior Team USA? I, yeah, I just don't know yet. We've never been in this situation before. So it's like, it's, it's kind of so hard to tell. I would just really hate to see uh, like us over committing and then not being able to do well in either. You know what I mean? But I've just never, I've personally never been in that situation. So I've, I'm definitely gonna have to consult like coaches and just and other people to see their opinions nothing set in stone yet but that was just kind of the first thing that popped up to us was like oh my gosh like like how are we going to do it all in one week but um but even if we even if we do do all three if we do just just juniors like um i'm looking forward to it so. Aaron, what about what about you what, what are your thoughts on that on playing both well i think the other thing is i don't know if you know but the lprt stop right after in kansas city the team yep. route um, stop. I want to go to that for sure. I mean, it's got the, that's the other thing I think about Holly Scott and she's got that, she's got the national tournament and then she's got to go to this LPRT stop and it's the grand slam. Like that's where the most money is. So the timing of that just isn't great. And, uh, I think, you know, three straight weeks of racquetball would be pretty hard. Um, I'm talking to my coach Robbie about it, and he thinks like as of right now, I just stick with juniors. But you know, things could change, and timing could change, whatever. Okay. You know what's interesting for for all of us here talking is just that the concept of the different divisions on different days within the festival. I mean, you know, there are a decent amount of players who are in their first year of college in the 18s, and you girls just said it. God, it'd be great if the 18s was first. And then I could play the adults after and kind of get after it and not really care, 
you know, exactly how the results went because the juniors are what I, what you want to, you know, finish this junior career off, get on the national team if possible and have a trip to go on this, this, this year, um, which is, is, we're all hopeful for that coming out of COVID, but you know, that's so, you know, that's kind of the big thing for me on all this is the not having any plan towards what days, which events are happening or which divisions for that matter are happening. Call it the whole damn thing. I don't care if it's one's national singles, one's national doubles, one's junior nationals, just give us the divisions on which day so we can start planning and, and make that happen. And it's an interesting idea. Maybe it's something, would you girls look to get in touch with USA Racquetball and kind of try to fight for that concept of 18s possibly being at the beginning of it all? Yeah, I feel like it'd make more sense because it's not like the adults can play in the juniors. So it wouldn't be, they wouldn't be playing in two divisions. Yeah, I didn't think about that. You know, yeah. the problem though, is that a lot of the school. juniors are in, in high school and still have grade school and high school. So it's an uh, 18s yeah. thing for me, not really a 16s and below. It would just be kind of highlighting the 18s divisions. And even then you're gonna have some young 18 year olds that are still juniors and seniors in high school and not able to quite get there for that June 3rd through 5th, let's call it June 3rd through, just even if it's a two day two day division, which it, maybe it could be with the numbers that, that the 18s girls are gonna draw. I mean, there's it's gonna be fun competition. That's for sure. I'm looking forward to, to oh, seeing yeah. that, whether it's live or whether I'm watching it on, on stream, but the competition's good. I don't know how many players will actually compete in that division. So you don't know how long it's gonna be, but you know, it's something for you guys to, and other 18 year old freshman college players to jump on USA Rockwell and maybe speak your opinion about. Aaron, Aaron, where are you from? You're from St. Louis? Yeah, I'm from St. Louis. Inside yeah. info, Suds, here we go. And, and Annie, you're from Oregon. Yeah, originally from Oregon, yeah. Okay, so question for both of you. I know you probably still have friends in high school. Is school out by June, I don't know, what would junior start maybe the eighth or ninth at the latest? Is, is high school out in your cities or where you're from? Um, yeah, Oregon's, yeah, it's out for her. Oregon's a little different. We get out, um, I know seniors get out like the first week, but then you have all the graduation stuff. I don't know what that's gonna look like this year, but that's gonna be a thing. And then uh, everyone else, all the other uh, level players would be out um, a week or two. We're usually out in the middle of June, so that might be a little bit of a problem. Well, all right, all right. It Go is ahead. Online. What? School is so, online. So. I mean, I'm still in <laughs> school right now. I'm going to train, okay. do my classes in the morning, train after. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. it's not undoable. Yeah. If people want to go, I think they're going to go. So. Well, listen, what Ellie and I, we want you to play in every possible division. But yes, we want you to be able to, you know, maximize your potential and abilities. Listen to your coach's advice. Listen to yourself. You know, like if I'm going to give you any advice as a player, I'm going to say, listen to yourself. And then the only thing I'll say as a coach, don't go to the ceiling and, you know, just attack, attack, attack. All right. So girls, Aaron, Annie, thank you so much for being on beyond the court. Have a great, you know, whatever training you're doing there with Ellie and uh, best of luck. Hope to see you there. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you, you guys. So yeah. Much. Have fun. Have a good stay, Aaron. See you later. <laughs> yeah. So that's that right there is uh that's my apartment on my parents' house. If I ever oh. were to need that. <laughs> that's well, a, that's are where you, are, I, you gonna, are you are you gonna get kicked out? I see Mike Locker and in, in, in we're we're going to Jeff Stark, so we gotta wait. Uh Scotty Mack, you got Jeff Stark. Only let him in if he could speak and we could hear him. Oh, we got him. Oh, we got him. Starkey. Can you hear me? We can hear you. This yes. is beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Jeff, Sorry about that, guys. I am no. the least technological guy. I, I'm just not good on this stuff. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Don't worry about that because right. we know how badass Sorry. you are on the left side. And, um, you know, Jeff, first off, a lot of people might not know this watching right now, but how many national championships do you have? I know you have a bunch. You know, me and Brent Walters tried to figure it out, and I, I, I he, he, he actually knows how many I have. It was... A couple of years ago, it was 28 or something like that, but I think I'm in the 30s. I don't know. I honestly don't know. My wife hangs them on the wall, uh, well, hey, but I, I, I don't know the actual count. There's, there's like 30 and then like 10 U.S. Open titles or something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's, 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 there's fun when Jimmy Lowe was playing so we can compete back and forth because, you know, it was uh, something that we both went for. 
Well, it's, it's funny because, you, you know, you've been around forever, Jeff. You know, you have more national championships and U.S. Open titles, you know, than most. And uh, so you're definitely somebody to speak on this topic. And we asked you to be on and we appreciate it. So I'm going to get right to it. Um, you know, you've been around forever. You've been playing forever. Uh, you're one of the most decorated USA racquetball players ever. What are your thoughts? What's your reaction to USAR's recent announcement about their national festival, June 3rd through the 12th in St. Louis? Well, uh, when they came out with the Denver, uh, the world doubles, I was excited to finally get back to racquetball. Everybody's itching to get to that maybe amateur or, or some kind of event that we can all go to like a U.S. Open. So Denver was the first one. So uh, I was excited about that. And then when they came out with this national thing, they haven't really, have, have they even broke down the dates of what the singles are, what the doubles are, and what the juniors, or they just combine it and they expect you to go for 10 days? Because that's most likely not going to happen for a lot of people. So perhaps I, I, yes, I'm just an every, every day, I'm the guy that works a full-time job and goes to every event. But mm -hmm. a 10-day event is not possible for me. That's why I love it when it was broken up like it was. So what my understanding, Jeff, and, and again, this is for you, this is more about for you guys, is that they're gonna break up singles, doubles, and juniors. Um, but but yes, it might mean that still it's extended. I, we don't know, right? We don't know the details. So so what 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 would you like to hear for you to be maybe play in singles and doubles? Well, I mean, they've already set the date, so it's obviously going to happen. But I'd, I'd like to hear when the singles and doubles are. I mean, and when the juniors is. I, I, I need to know the dates. I, I can't I'm, – I don't know how many people that are like me that, are, that play all these events can go for 10 days or even seven days is tough. And I don't know why they didn't just break it up like they always have, you know, have national doubles, national singles, and then juniors all separate times – that was not a good plan. That wasn't working all these years. I thought it was. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You know, there's, I think, I think it's, you know, we all have the feeling since it's been a full year of not having tournaments that you're cramming everything we haven't been able to do for a year into one event right now. And, um, you know, I think the big play and what Sudzi was getting at there is, you know, we didn't hear any announcement on what divisions are playing what days. Right. And so what I think I want to know from you, if someone like you, because you, you know, you do talk about it and we've talked um, about, you know, you got a full time job. This is this is your passion, racquetball, and you're good at it on a high, high level. Um, tons of titles. So you, these mean something to you to go to these national events. Uh, but what divisions would work? What would work best for you in the divisions you're going to play? I mean, tell us what divisions are, you would play in a doubles and singles format, you know, in a national event and how many days can you handle that financially and time-wise just time-wise in general well with the with the format being what it is um let me tell you just from before when they, when they had national doubles uh i'd play the max that they let me play i'd play the two age groups the 45s the 50s or the 40s and 45s uh, me and keith meyer would just play the you know we'd wait to the end just to see what the biggest or toughest draw is and then we play those two and then I'd like to play, you know, uh, like the qualifier, you know, yeah. my third one. And the same thing with singles. I've always played the qualifier. I play my age groups. I play last year, 40, 45s, and then I play the qualifier. I can't, is it So that would be six divisions. That would be six divisions for you. Yeah, and I, and I would do that. I would love to do that. Okay, so how many days, a, how many days do you need to play that? And how many days can you not stay? Like, for me, it's interesting because they, they haven't mentioned, they haven't said anything. They haven't announced anything. So. Wow, I mean, do they have the balls the, to kind of like separate divisions by age and have doubles and singles? If you're playing 45 plus, can you have doubles and singles happening within a three day span so that just, you get it just, all in at once? Just to be fair, Jeff, before you answer that, the, the one announcement that they came out with after the dates and the festival was that they are going to split it up. And I see they've been, USA Racquetball has been pretty adamant about their response is you don't have to be there the whole time. But that doesn't take away what what we're getting at here. So go ahead, right. Jeff. I'm sorry. Right. Well, that 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 was the thing about it broken up to when they have national doubles in February. I could play those three events, you know, and I could play uh, the two the, the two divisions, the forty fives, the fifties, and then the qualifier or the centurion or something, and not worry about it. They can play me as much as they want because they know I'm playing three events, and it was only you know 
when they have national doubles, they say, oh, you know, Tuesday to Sunday. That's really not how it is. It's usually a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and sometimes finals are on Sunday, sometimes are on uh, Saturday. Most likely, most of my finals were on Saturday. And the same with singles. So that get me in the qualifier, like a national singles. I know I'm not going to go too far in the qualifier. You just never know who I'm going to meet up with. But at least it gets me in there, and I can play my age groups too. I'm not sure how that venue is going to work on a one-long tournament. You know, or if they even think there's people out there like me that can play the age groups and still play the qualifier, you know, if they let me play 10 divisions, I would, <laughs> I, mean, I just would, I would, you know, but they, they limit to you. So, so how many, how many days do you have, how many days travel do you have in you for an event like this? Like what's, what's, what can you not do? Um, well, I mean, I could play, you know, a day of travel there and a day back. That's two days of travel. That's with any any big tournament or any anything that you're going to, you know, me and you are in Pretty California. Much. So um, two days of travel. And then, I don't know, I'm always at nationals and people are like, wow, I'm playing three divisions. But I honestly, I play all day. It's just like one of your tournaments that have, you know, you play 11 matches. I mean, I like that. But I also haven't been in a format where it's 10 days before like they're doing it it's it's brand new so it's yeah. hard to say yeah. you know what, what's going to happen if they, if they have to break those days down they have to say hey singles are going to be monday through wednesday and doubles are going to be you know wednesday through saturday it's going to make it easier then and uh, most likely i probably won't play any qualifier events not i'm you know not too concerned about that anyway but i will play as many age groups as they'll let me play on those on those days um it's just going to be different you know i've been what 47 years in racquetball now 1979 junior nationals yeah so i've been going to these for a long time and uh it's i've never I, I know we've had a weird year last year i just don't know they just came up with hey let's do this whole thing in a week yeah i mean are you playing colorado jeff are you going to yeah, yeah. and that awesome. I, i'm going i'm going to colorado Great. and uh I'm, I'm i'm not even sure what i'm gonna do there i'm gonna play probably a couple doubles with minor. <laughs> Right. I'm going to play as much as they'll let me play. I mean, I'm going right. to these things to play, you know, so I, I know. Well, Heiser's on, Heiser's online watching. Heis, let Jeff play like five or six events. So I'm what, still looking. Who, who are you yeah. playing pro? I know you're trying to play some pro doubles. I, I talk you up all the time on the left side. So who are you trying to get with on, in the doubles? Any, any prospects? Well, I'm going to play with minor in the age group. And then uh, I, I haven't thought about pro doubles yet. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I, I can so always there play. Isn't, there isn't, there isn't pro doubles. It's open doubles, oh, Jeff. Right. Well, and then the main, the main pro doubles is the mixed pro doubles. That's right. Okay, so there's no right. there's no regular pro doubles then. No, it's open doubles. And Heis, okay. Jim Heiser's online, so Heis, please comment in the box. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's 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 pro singles, pro women's pro singles, men's pro singles, women's pro singles, and mixed pro doubles. And then there's going to be a men's open doubles. So so for instance, Alex and I will not play in that event in doubles, but I will play mixed doubles with someone. Okay. And so, I'll probably end up, I'll, I'll probably play with two divisions with minor and I might even throw in uh, throw, I might just play the pro singles just for, just to do it, just to get yeah. in there and play pro, you know, I mean, we I could play open two. We could play open doubles. If you get me a sponsor, we just got to play, you know, you play the right, I'll play the left. Anything mm -hmm. down the middle, you take. It'd be yeah, fun. I can play backhands. I can play backhands too. Me and Furman won a national champ. Me and Tom Furman won a national championship and I, we're both lefties. I played the back. I loved it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Jeff. Jeff's Jeff's awesome at doubles, man. He can he, and singles, but you know he's 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 got I'm skills. You guys could you guys could do that. You guys could play either side. You guys could play wherever the hell you want in each rally, and it would be it'd be entertaining, especially you know in that forty five plus. Which Sudsy, you're you're available for that as hey, well. <laughs> hey Sudsy, what I wanted to ask you and John is how come I'm the only guy from our time that are playing age groups? You know, it's like me and Jimmy and Keith Miners there and Doug Gannam's there, but. How come we can't have like a 40, 45 with an Ellie and a Sudsy and a Stark and a Swain and all these guys? Who would not come out to see that 40 division if, if everybody showed up? That would be the might. biggest division at Nationals if you guys all played 40s. It, it, it might happen. Yeah. You never know. You, you know? You, you, know <laughs> you never know. It could yeah, happen. I, I, I got, hey, I got, I, I, I played a 35 at Houston one year and got a national, one more national title with that 35. And that's kind of, that was, I, think I, was I have one with, on with Conine. Yeah. I have one with Conine at 35. <laughs> you got, hey man, you know, the answer to that, Jeff, is that you have a lot of racquetball left in you still, and you've got a lot of strength and ability to play this game. And, you know, you fucking lefties, for some reason, just don't get arm <laughs> problems, really. 
and you can swing all day. And so, uh, you know, that's why you're able to play all these divisions and, and, um, that's great, you know, and keep it, keep it rocking. And uh, one of the questions I had when I saw your posts on Facebook for you uh, right off the bat is, you know, what do you value more this year? The Denver stop, because it is pro racquetball. There is some value to watching some awesome racquetball along with your fun matches that, that you'll have, or, or this now this festival. Um, I've never been to the, you know, the world, this world doubles is what it started out as. And, uh, I've never had, a, obviously a, you, you're a champion, you're a world champion, right? It's world doubles. So I've never, I've never had a title like that. And I'd like to, uh, I, I've been looking forward to it for a couple of years and this last year. And so that's the only event I haven't gone to. I go to the U S open and both nationals every year. So I, I think I'm looking forward to Denver and I, and I like the four day thing, you know, this whole week thing scares me and I'm not saying it's not going to work out. I, I, yeah. I'm hoping it will. I love racquetball first. I want this thing to, I want to get there and say, Oh my gosh, look at all these people. And I want it to succeed. I'm not saying that it won't, but I'm also, uh, I've been around for a long time and I know that a week long and cramming everything, it's going to scare people away. And that's what we don't want to do. I, I, I don't want to just, you know, I wanted to be more informative about, Hey, you don't have to go for a week. And I didn't even know that until you guys told me that. And I, you know, I, I know I'm not on Facebook every day, but um, they well, have to be more informative, but I'm really looking forward to Denver. That's the first thing that I'm going to have to where it's going to measure me. And, you know, um, I took some time this, this uh, whole last year and, and a little, little healthier. So I'm looking forward to get on the court um, to, to compete. And that's what I'm starving for, you know, Probably like, yeah. like everybody else. So let me just say before we before you get your your thought out there, you know, hopefully if there's a there's a good pro out there that needs a partner for for Denver. I think, uh, well, that's not happening again. I'm going into this Denver event feeling like it's a yeah. like there's a men's pro sub. I'm trying to sell Jeff again on that on that idea because I, you know I I've you know I've been in Diaz's ear a little bit about Jeff about playing you know playing with Jeff and the creativity that could come from that. And obviously Diaz and Jake love playing with each other, so I'm not taken away from that concept no. at all. But you yeah. know. There's been some unique pairings that I've said, hey, you know, you might want to you might want to get with Jeff and see if you guys can mesh together, because uh, even though you're damn near 50 or you are at 50, you know, you can still play. <laughs> you can still play with some of these young guys and show them doesn't what's up with anything. that lefty. Yeah, it doesn't as much. Doesn't you're, you're showing that, too, with your game right now as well. So, uh, you know, you know, being able to do certain things on the court that some of the youngsters haven't seen because of the transition from little rackets to the size that they are now. And Jeff went through that. You know that transition as a kid into 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 uh, through his teens into a great adult player. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I hope there's some doubles events that are out there here in the near near future, Jeff, that you can get out there and mix it up with the pros. Looking forward to it. Uh, I miss those days with Andy Hawthorne. In fact, we ran into you. One yeah, you year. guys are good. Yeah, you guys kicked our butt. I had a young Rojas. I had a 16 year old Rojas with me, and uh, he, was he was a playing, young pup. He was playing the back end, and I was. I wasn't really ready to win a match that was that quality. You guys played good. You guys played solid together. Andy was all over the place. You were kind of dictating with your reverse pinches and, and you know, being able to use the whole court in the all-court doubles game. It was fun, though. It was fun to be in that moment for a second. I think it was the semis. I only think we had to win one match to get to that semis, though. So, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was that. Yeah, that doesn't count. But, Je but Jeff, I'm going to tell you, Heiser just said there is a 1000 bucks in the open in Denver in the doubles. So, I don't know. I mean – if we could play opposites, it might be fun, be entertaining, go win another title. Well, well my, I, but my, I have, my mixed partner might not let me do that. I have your number, so maybe I'll I'll call you. <laughs> All right. All right. We're gonna we're going to let you go now, Jeff. We really, really All appreciate right. you being here. Really, it's always fun. We, you know, you're a guest that Ellie and I talk about. Like, we want you to have your own show, you know, and just talk old school and go. So we might set that up again. And the next time we bring in, I know your mute button will be operating properly. So, yes. Uh, yes, it will. We figured it out. We'll, we'll stay in touch, Jeff. Really, I appreciate it. I appreciate right, you joining us. Take care. Time. See you, buddy. See we'll you soon, buddy. All right. See All right. So Scotty Max sent a text, and he said that we are going to commercial, and we'll be right back with Kane Wazalenchuk.
Stiffy. All right. Well, that's an old fashioned. It's an old fashioned. It's not Here we straight. are back with the king, Kane Wazalanchuk. <laughs> Kane, you know, it's always awesome to have you. Ellie was super excited. Ellie does not know about this announcement that's coming. I know you had a super busy weekend. Uh, you know, you, you want to talk about that a little bit? Because a lot of people don't know, like, you're a full-time dad, too. Yeah, uh, I did a lot of driving <laughs> this weekend. Uh, yeah, a ton. I uh, uh, went and watched Kendall's uh, volleyball in the morning. So, and then I had to drive another hour and a half. You know, I drove an hour south to drive an hour and a half north. And today did it all again. But, you know, those are times that uh, you can never get back. So it was fun. A little busy but uh, and a little tired, but that's okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to brag for you since you won't say it, but I do know that she did win her volleyball tournament and uh, not shocking. Yeah. Yeah. She's all right. I mean, I mean, she's already starting that Wasilanchuk winning blood already. You know, I like it. I like it. Uh, so do I. So congrats. Congrats. on. Hey, on that note, I'm kind of curious. Is she playing any racquetball? You know, and uh, you know what her feelings are, what, what your girl's feelings are for the racquetball. Um, you know, I, it's one of those things where I'd really like them to play, but like, I don't really feel like I want to push them a little bit to play, you know, like it's, it's this struggle, right? Because like how I was brought up with like my dad, right. Is that I was the one packing my bag at five o'clock in the morning. And my dad's like, Hey, listen, the club doesn't open till eight o'clock in the morning. So like, just go to bed, you know? Um, so, you know, for me, you know, I, I I'd like them to take an interest, but also too, you know, Unfortunately, my daughters are at the age where I'm kind of not, I'm old and I'm not too cool too, either, yeah. you know, yeah, you don't yeah. realize. And, I, and I'm just saying, this is, I beg question. to differ. Listen, they, I try to tell them like, listen, your dad is cool. You know? <laughs> like, first of all, I got a full set of hair. That's nice. Yeah, you do. You know, I'm almost 40. I got a full set of hair, like, you know, but I get it, you know, and I, I try and, um, you know, I try and get them out there, but they also have busy sports schedules. I mean, my daughters are in serious volleyball and they have yeah. practice Monday, Tuesday or Monday, Wednesday. They have tournaments Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, it's, it's really busy, you know? So, um, you know, I'll get them out there and they've been out there a little bit, but, uh, you know, they, they got their own thing going on. And, and if they show interest in it, I'll be more than gladly to take them in play. Well, naturally, we all hope that they do at some point, you know, and it's their a sport that could be there for them for life. And and uh, with you as their father, you know, we know they'll they'll have it in their blood. Yeah, I mean, I think that overall, I mean, obviously, I'll never stop, obviously, playing racquetball at whatever capacity, right? Whether it's competitively or just at the club or whatever. So, you know, as they get a little bit older, I'm sure, you know, that, uh, you know, and their distraction is less, right? Like as far as their age and stuff. And you know, I'm, I'm sure that'll be okay. But I mean, I, I, to say that my daughters are going to be aspiring racquetball professionals, um, not at this point, it doesn't look like it, they're going to be, but they could be, but that's not because they don't want to, it's just because they have different interests in different sports. And, and, you know, I'm a hundred percent supportive of that, you know, um, there's a small part of me that, you know, kind of, you know, tears me apart about it, but like at the same time, I mean, you know, they're going to make plenty of decisions in their life that I'm probably not going to agree with. But, uh, you know, as long as that's what they want to do and they give a hundred percent, you know, I support it hundred percent. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. We had a, we had a dad ask us a question and that would have been a great answer also. So, you know, King, we, 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 we're here together, you and I and, and Ellie, and, uh, you know, we, we have a big announcement that I know that you and I are super proud of and super excited about, you know, and it's been funny reading some of the guesses online, you know, are we starting a new tour? Are you running for Congress? Um, you know, no, it's, it's, it's not that, you know, so the announcement is, is that, you know, Kane and I have known each other for a very long time and we've discussed you know, doing something together for many years. And, and quite honestly, when you're competitors, it, it's really hard. It's hard to work together knowing that, hey, we might be battling it out, you know, next week or the week after. And then I was gone from the sport for, for a few years while I was doing exactly what Kane is, you know, raising his kids. And, um, you know, we decided that racquetball is in serious need of, of something different and, and, you know, something energetic, but also with a competitive spirit and then we also have a big passion of, of being able to teach and learn and empower and make people better and inspire and motivate them. So Kane and I came together and, and we really talked about, you know, what can we do? 
And the first thing we said is we don't want to do a camp or a clinic. You know, that's kind of traditional and there's a lot of good things about that. We've all been to it. Ellie's been to it. Kane's been to them. I've been to them. We've taught at them. Many of you watching have been to them. You know, we want to offer an experience. And, and Kane and I, and, and of course, you know, Allie and Veronica and, and some people that are helping us build this idea came up with an experience. So we're going to have an experience down in Vero Beach, Florida, uh, April 16th through April 18th. The event's going to actually start on Saturday the 17th, but it is not a camp. It is not a clinic. It's an opportunity for you, for any level that you might be, to come and spend some serious, intimate time with Kane and I. But we're going to compete. You know, we're going to ball. And the format that we have for everybody is really going to give you a chance to not only compete with us, you're going to compete against us. And at the end, you're going to get a real feel of what it's like to be part of that in that environment. And throughout that whole weekend, you're also going to learn. We're going to share our knowledge. We're going to teach you. It's not going to be the old school, you know, rack it up, make contact here. You know, and then we're going to do 20 minutes on serve and serve return. No, you're going to play. You're going to play a lot. We're also going to hold and host a really kick-ass, really nice dinner on Saturday night. Uh, another great breakfast on Sunday morning. And we're going to put you in an, into a competitive environment. There's only going to be 12 spots available. And actually, as Kane knows, there's not 12 spots available. There's only 11. And we decided that 12 was, was the max we could do because that's the way we're going to be able to give you our attention. So, Kane, you know, talk about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and, uh, you know, just your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, surprise, surprise, you're long-winded, you know, and you just went on for a little <laughs> bit, but that's okay. I mean, uh, there's not really more that I can really say because um, that's kind of, you know, I mean, honestly, it's, it, it, it's about the experience, right? And, uh, you know, we have had a lot of conversation about it not being this, um, you know, we talk about racquetball in many ways of being kind of stagnant, right? Like uh, tournaments are the same, you know, sponsor doubles are the same. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that stuff. I understand that, right? But there's, there's something that I think that obviously, you know, we need a little bit of a, of a boost here, you know, and we need something that, you know, um, is different. And I think that that's something that, you know, I don't, I maybe back earlier on in, in maybe the eighties and stuff, but I don't remember two pros, uh, that could arguably, arguably be, you know, uh, um, debated as the greatest ever to be able to co collaborate and come together and, um, you know, and, and, and give knowledge, but, again, right, I speak to the fact that we want something different here, right, and, um, you know, I, I always, you know, anytime I went to a camp, again, just like you said, right, like, uh, you know, you and Ellie as well, you know, it's like, arm up, do this, do that, you know, I kind of want to, I mean, there's going to be some of that, right, but, um, you know, it's going to be a competitive environment, and, you know, I think that, one of the things that a lot of people are going to want to see and what I don't think if, if you mentioned it, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I missed it, but um, you know, at the very end, I mean, me and you are going to ball, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's something that, um, you know, a lot of people, that's going to be an experience for, and that's what part of the experience is, is that this will be something like me and you are going to ball and it won't be streamed. It won't be this. This will be something that's exclusive to, you know, the people that are in the camp. And we want this to be, um, you know, throwing you just, you know, to the wolves kind of, so to speak, right? Like we want you to be, you know, uh, competitive. We want to know what's, what's like competitively. We're going to get, you're going to get some on court, off court stuff. You're going to, I mean, it's just going to be a great experience, something different than really, from my recollection that has ever been done, you know, uh, ever before, uh, especially with two athletes like ourselves. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure we, we would have to go into the history books to look at, you know, if, if a Hogan and Brum ever got together and, and put some, put some stuff on back in the seventies and early eighties, you know, maybe there was some stuff there that, 
for the time is similar to now, although, you know, now we've progressed to this, to this era. And obviously you two are in that conversation as two of the greatest. You're right in there. You're right in the top three, four of that. Obviously Kane, you know, yours, yours is kind of breaking all records. So it's obviously right there, you know? Um, and so Suds, you know, with you two together, that's, that's tremendous. I think, you know, having some experience with this type of concept, I think one of the questions that people will ask is how much court time can they expect in this environment, you know, it's a several day event here. You know, what type of court time are they going to put in? Because they're going to physically have to be able to handle a lot of play because we hear, we hear you that it's, you know, it's not, Hey, you know, we're going to do boring ash drills and we're going to talk about your mechanics early on. And it gets monotonous, although important for some players whose mechanics are jacked, but you can handle that conversation and play. They might not be able to work on it right away, but, they can hear the information. You can talk about it over those couple of days. But how much court time are these players going to be be experiencing? Yeah. So, so Ellie, that's a great question. And you know, that was something Kane and I really wanted to discuss. But you know, really, we wanted to nail it. You know, we want to hit this and make it right for you, for the player, for whoever's coming to 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 this experience, to this opportunity. So, Ellie, you know, on Friday night, we're going to have like a little meet and greet. We're going to meet at the club. And we're going to meet the 12 individuals that, that, you know, eat up these spots and a part of this, and they're going to play and smack it around. But Saturday and Sunday, they're just going to play. They're going to be on the court playing and competing. We're setting up, you know, they'll be, we're not going to give too many details right now, but, you know, think of like UFC ultimate fighter. Um, There's going to be a team Kane. There's going to be a team Sudsy. They're going to go at it. Uh, You know, and, and there's going to be many instances, I'll tell you this, all day Saturday, you're either going to be competing with us, and when I say that, you're literally on Kane's team, in the court, he's your doubles partner, uh, versus me and one of my team players. Uh, and then we'll switch it, but I'm not gonna get too, too deep into the details. So the entire time they're there, they're competing, and they're playing and they're really going to get deep into the mental side of, of what Kane and I see. And of course we're going to touch on all the mechanics and the structures and the, and the game styles and whatnot, but like be ready to compete because you know, Kane and I are thirsty to teach you also. And for us to teach you and share our knowledge, we need you to join us and play with us at a level that, yeah, of course, you know, you know, maybe you're not going to beat Kane or I in, in a game of singles, but you can play with us and then you can play each other. And we're going to be right there as your coach, as your mentor. And uh, we're going to be, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a competitive environment. Kane. Yeah, no, I I think, I mean, you know, one of the things that was big for when Sudsy and I were discussing this was, you know, um, in any camp, um, you know, you always think about the downtime, right? Like you can't, if, like if you have a camp with certain amount of people and certain amount of courts, it's hard to just give everybody the attention, right? But here's an opportunity for us also to give some on court, but also give this kind of team camaraderie, this this mm-hmm. team, right? So there's going to be a, a little kind of a little insight and suds. I hope you're okay with this, but like one of the one of the insights is going to be, you know, part of the. I should say part of the, the, the camp is going to be playing on the court with Suds and I, but also Suds and I also outside the court talking to the team, right? Encouraging the team, right? So it's team Kane, team Sudsy, right? And we're trying to, and, and so when there's somebody playing, I'm going to be talking to the team like, hey, listen, you know, you know, so-and-so and whatever, and giving them insight on what I'm thinking. Plus, you know, we really want that. We really want this experience to feel like you're a part of everything. This isn't you coming just to um, a, 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 a camp, which is not what we want to call it at all. This is an experience. This is this is a situation that you know. We want people to understand that you're going to be in a competitive environment. You're going to learn. It's going to be hard, and we. Sudsy and I are going to be on the court a majority of the time. And then we're going to allow to those, those athletes compete against each other as well too with us and give some on court, off court, you know, kind of direction and, and, and not have this situation where people don't feel a part of it. Um, 
you know, I feel like there's sometimes where when you're at lessons or clinics, right. And you do a clinic and you go, okay, I, you know, for an hour, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give a clinic. And then you go in there and you ramble on about forehand, backhand, and let's just say you have eight people. Out of those eight people, not everybody wants to hear about the forehand, backhand. You know, some people just want to hear the serve. Some people are just in there to talk to you. It doesn't, it's not even about getting better, you know, and, and, and just the experience of being on the court with you. So this is one of those, you know, things where I feel like we can encompass all of it you know, and make this a truly remarkable, ex remarkable experience with two of the greatest players ever, which I, again, you know, I'm sure that it's been done. I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's, it's probably been done back in the seventies, eighties or whatever, but it's been a long time. And I think that this is kind of a, uh, um, a, I can't see any downside to it. I think it's a, I, I think it's a, it's a boost for where our sport is. And, you know, the thing that has, you know, the misconception is like, we have this individual sport, right? Like, you know, I've competed against you, Ellie. I've obviously competed against you, Sudsy. I've comp competed against Cliff, Rocky. But like, when it ultimately comes down to it, like we all love each other too. And we respect each other, you know? And when it's come to, you know, doing certain things with racquetball, um, there's this kind of barrier, right? It's always been this real hard, you know, kind of like, well, you know, I don't want to give you my secrets and you don't want to give me my se your <laughs> secrets and this and that. And like, you know, and, 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 and it's just, this been, you know, and, and Winterton coaches me and Fran coaches you, or, you know, it's always been this thing. And I just think that this is a situation where we can kind of break that a little bit. You know, I think that we're in a, I think really there's a lot of pros, not just Sudsy and I, but I think that, there's a lot of pros that, you know, people would like to see, you know, I mean, it, Cliff, you know, um, I mean, you know, even guys like Tim Doyle, right? Like, I mean, there are people out there that, that, you know, and I just think that it, it, there's not really a lot of stuff going on in the ball. It looks like it's going to be, you know, kind of, you know, getting a little bit better as what the schedule will look, but you know, we need some of these great players also to be involved and work together. And I guess this is kind of like where Sudsy and I kind of sat down and we're like, listen, you know, like I have my influence, you have your influence. Let's put this together. You know, our knowledge of racquetball, let's create this experience that, you know, that, uh, um, that'll be beneficial for everybody and, 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 and the racquetball world too. And maybe it might even live on and grow and add, players like you know yourself Ali you know come to to an event you know to a to a camp and we have this you know this this great dynamic and it's you know me you and it's us three and Cliff you know and we're doing something and I mean that's that's a uh, you know it's tough to grow the sport and what we're at but I think that we have to hang our hat on the the past great people that have come along and I think that they have a lot to offer you don't have to be current I think that you you just you know um you set your mark, you know, Jason, yourself, uh, you know, all those people. And I think that you guys have stuff to offer. And I think that we need to take advantage of it now to help grow our sport. So, yeah, it, I agree. I agree a lot on this one. You know, it, it's, it's definitely something Kate and I are super excited about. We really hope that you can join, that you can be part of this. Uh, we're going to give you all the information after this. There's the flyer up on the screen. We hope that you can share our passion, you know, with us. Just a couple things to remember. This is the Kane and Sudsy experience. It's going to be in South Beach, in, I'm sorry, in Vero Beach, Florida, April 16th through the 18th. If you have travel restrictions, you don't need to get there till the 17th in the morning. But, you know, some of the things that, that really stick out, and, and Kane and I want you to understand, this is an opportunity. You're going to be competing. You're going to be learning. There's going to be a lot of organic and, and just natural instruction that takes place, almost like constant competitive lessons. You know, our plan is to inspire and to motivate all of you. We're going to do a ton of mental strength and conditioning. You know, it's going to be challenging. But like one of our favorite parts, Kane and I, is that you're going to be socially hanging out with us. You know, we're going to go to an awesome dinner, which, by the way, Kane and I are hosting. And, uh, you know, we already have the place. It's right on the beach. It's really nice. You know, it's set up for any level. I, Kane, I see a lot of questions and people commenting. You know, no, it's not going to be live streamed. 
you know, this is exclusive to the 12 individuals that are there. When Kane and I play our exhibition at the end of the event, oh, we're playing. And uh, a little secret, there's a chance that we're going to be playing for some big money too. Uh, but we, we'll talk about that later. So we would love you to be there. And, and, and what we really want to do is we want to make you better and help you be better, whether it's on the court or off the court. And, you know, through our experiences, Kane and I, and what we've done, you know, we failed a lot and, and we've succeeded a lot also. But if we can give that to you, whether you're a junior, whether you're a B player or, or the best professional or second best, because he's the best, you know, in the world, you should consider this. And uh, hopefully it's something that, that you really can come out to. And at the end of the day, like we do anything else, I know Kane and I are going to want you to leave and go, that was the best racquetball experience I've ever been part of. Okay. I mean, with that, you know, that's about it for now. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I totally agree. I mean, I just, uh, you know, I think that it's important too, that, you know, this, ex, you know, this, this is a start of an experience that hopefully can catch on and, and, and also um, grow upon other pros as well too. You know, and hopefully this would be the stepping stone of, you know, um, you know, maybe the next one, you know, Ellie comes, you know, Cliff comes, maybe, you know, whatever, right? I just think that, um, you know, I think that, you know, you think short term, you know, it's, you know, I think that's great that me and you are doing it, you know, but for me, I, my vision is long term and including other great pros and great players that have come along and creating an environment, a competitive environment to where maybe next time it's, you know, uh, you and Ellie against me and Cliff as a team. And we sure. have this dynamic, you know, so, um, you know, I, I think that for me, you know, I'm a historian, obviously a lot of people probably don't understand that about me. I have a lot of respect for, um, the past pros and stuff like that. And, and, uh, I just feel like, uh, the unfortunate part sometimes about our sport is what we have great players that come along and then they disappear, you know, and then, uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, you know, you came back, thankfully, so it's, but like, that's one of those things, right? You disappeared and it affected racquetball and Cliff has disappeared and Marty's disappeared. And I think that it's important that we embrace the history of the sport. And I think that this is one of the ways for me. And I would like to think that I speak for you too, as well in this regard that, you know, we can kind of bring that together and hopefully through the future, um, the people that in, are, have, have been influential in our sport can be involved in this. And obviously everybody benefits from it. Um, and uh, it's just really sad to see sometimes um, great players go away and, uh, and uh, we need to involve them. We need to, you know, uh, get that history, right? We need to get that history back. Yeah, well, well, Kane, with that said, you know, I'm going to let you go, but I can't wait. You know, you and I have a lot of work to do. We've already been working. You know, we want you to join us. If, if you're ready to compete, hang out with Kane and I, you know, down in South Beach, uh, South Florida for, for a couple of days. Get better. Get you prepared for whatever event it is. Maybe it's just being the best in your club. Maybe it's being the best in your state. Maybe you want to win a U.S. Open or a national title. You know, Kane and I are going to do that. We're going to put you in, in, in a situation, in an environment uh, to make you better. We promise that. All the information is going to follow. A lot of people want to know the price. You know, we're going to put up the flyer again. It's going to be out there. Uh, you'll see that as well as a lot of marketing here the next couple of days. But remember, there's only 12 spots that we were, we were offering, which is now actually 11. So there's 11 spots offered. Uh, Kane and Sudsy at gmail.com. But soon you'll see all the info. So Kane, thank you so much. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're going to end the show. I'm going to speak to you, you know, every day from now until forever. So uh, thanks. And we'll talk soon. And, and hopefully we'll get a nice crew out there. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And uh, always good talking to you, Ali. Take yeah, care, buddy. Good seeing you, buddy. Good seeing you. Great idea, man. Uh, Talk to you soon. All right, man. We'll see you guys. Thank you. All right, Ellie. So there it is. You know, I'm super excited. Kane and I, you know, we're really inspired by ho hopefully helping, you know, a whole group of people. You know, I, there's so many questions I see, you know, how much is it? And what level? And, and like, if you're ready to have an experience and an opportunity where you're going to compete, you're going to learn, you know, it's going to be inspiring, motivating, you know, just to hang out with Kane and I for the weekend, 
All those questions will be answered. The flyer is going to go out right after this show. Uh, we're really, really excited about it, you know? Yeah, it's a great idea. You know, and it's, you know, I talk about pickleball a little bit, but this is happening in the pickleball world quite a bit. And this is a lot of the pros actually make the majority of their earnings and their living in pickleball from these camps. And and honestly, this is something that could translate to, to you know, two to three day weekday camps as well. You could be doing these quite often, you know, with the number of players not being too high, um, you know, and, and, you know, we'll see the details of all the pricing. You'll release that pretty soon. Of course, it's good. People are going to be on a commitment to this. I think that feeling's out there and kind of understood, but you're going to get quite a unique experience with you two, you two guys specifically. And honestly, you know, you, right now you guys are at the perfect age to do this. And, you know, yeah, we say age doesn't matter much when it comes to the sport. And if you're ready to go, you're ready to go. But you guys are at the age where some of the players are going to be younger than you that attend this. Some of them are going to be older than you. And you have a good understanding of what it takes now at 46 for yourself to, hey, to play at 46 at this level. There's reasons why you're able to do that. And there's reasons why others aren't. And Kane's not too far behind you. I mean, right at whatever he is. 39, I think, 39, 40, he's right there, you know, it's in his later stages. So this isn't something he would have did at 21, 22, 23. He wasn't ready for it mentally. He was still in his, getting his, building his mojo and what became. So, you know, it's something you guys could do for a long time. And others as well, Caden made mention of it. I think that's, you know, to a certain extent, we did something similar to this at a different level when I have all these guys here in Stockton for a while there. And we were doing, we were calling them camps, we were calling them experiences, but there was a lot more playing than your normal camp. It wasn't like going to a junior team camp or a junior, you know, training camp when we were young and doing a lot of mechanics and drills that aren't too exciting and aren't too dynamic. You know, we were more trying to be more dynamic and I'm sure you guys will take that and then, uh, you know, make it, make it really exclusive with this 12 players coming to attend. That's a small number for two guys like yourselves. So I think they'll, uh, they'll get a lot of attention. Yeah, we're down to 11. And Ellie, one of the things that's super, super cool and super exciting, you know, we're going to play an exhibition, Kane and I, and so many people have always said they want to see that and see that. And we're going to ball. And, and you know, we've talked about that. And it's, it's not going to be live streamed. It's going to be exclusive, you know, to those who are there. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead. Yeah, you know, that's all great. You know, since we're talking ball and stream and everything, let's give kudos to the Kelly brothers for they threw a tournament. <laughs> they threw yeah. out a tournament that was streaming on several different, seems like several different streams were going at the same time, which means they had proper Wi-Fi set up in, in, in the court, you know, at the court situation. So they got it done. Joe won his own tournament, some good players there. Tremendous. And so, you know, that's a a congratulations to Joe for that. And I'm sure they're going to do a bunch more of those and invite different players in and people are going to come in and experience that, that uh, the Kelly court. And so kudos to them for that. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. That was great. Joe Kelly, Sam Kelly, you know, thank you for that. You know, with that, Ellie, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll get out that information about the Kane and Sudsy experience down in Vero Beach, Florida, April 16th, 17th, and 18th. And, uh, you know, you'll be able to email us with any questions, any concerns, but we really hope to see you there. You know, and Ellie, this is, this is one of those, man, where we should see like low level pros and high open players that really want that knowledge. I'll never forget, you know, Cliff saying once in an interview on ESPN, he said, the biggest mistake I ever made was talking to Sudsy, you know, and answering his questions and telling him these types of things. And, and like, this is where I would love to see those type of players, but I know the egos are there. I get it. You know, we've been there, but uh, it, it would be nice to see that. And it's, it's men, women, juniors, whoever, you know, I did see something about juniors. We are going to uh, hopefully do one for strictly for juniors as well at some point. You know, let's be really honest. You're going to see guys 58 and older and maybe a couple gals maybe. in that same range. But yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see. And that'll be, I think, something you guys should use the platforms to announce when, when, it, when it sells out at 12 and kind of highlight who those players are, where they're coming from, what levels they are, what they're about, their age and that, if they'll let you say their age. Because I think people would be interested in that <clears throat> in that kind of thing and who's making the commitment to to come to this first experience. So, you know, you guys got a lot of work. You said it, and I'm sure you'll get to doing it. And, and uh, it'll be exciting to hear about it. It was an interesting call tonight with USA Racquetball Festival topic. And, you know, we didn't really talk about our opinions of it. I think, I think you know, understanding go what for I was it. Go, saying. Go, ahead, go, ahead, you know, go real quick. Little, What's your just, opinion on it? I, I kind of made mention to it. I just think that, you know, it's a, I like the idea. I've one, been one who 
thinks that this is possible because people will come and go on the days that they need to be there. Again, pickleball world. That's what happens at the big pickleball events. People will fly in and fly out before the event's over because their divisions are done. Uh, if they want to stay a day or two extra, fine. That's fine. But, you know, I think this is a great idea. I just think the announcement should have came with exact time frames for the divisions so that it's right out on the table. And look, it may not be the same another time because you learn from this first type of event like this, but it would be nice. You wouldn't have as many complaints about, well, what divisions, you know, what days would I need to be there? And this idea of being there for 10 days, 12 days, you know, you kind of break it down and be able to see it right off. So I think that would be my only small complaint to USA Racquetball on this. And I hope they come out with that info as quickly as possible so that we can get onto the positives of the idea of the event happening. Because for me, as a, you know, here in my family, the Junior Nationals is part of it. So Julius is in his final year. He wants to go for sure. My daughter, I'll be honest, she's more COVID worried. She's not really excited about it quite yet, but hopefully we get her there by that time. So I'm, I'm excited to hear about the details of the event. Yeah, I think, you know, a uh, good idea by USA Racquetball. I think the concept was pretty good. I think the execution was not. I think, uh, you, you know, you messed up there. And, and at the end of the day, Ellie, you know, there's so many mixed opinions. We're seeing so many different sides, you know, of, of, of they like it, they hate it, they don't know, you know, but hey, maybe next time, like pull your members, you know, pull the players, get a little bit of an idea, right? I mean, we do polls all the time nowadays. Like, why not ask them? Not, you know, I heard something that really bothered me. It was from somebody with a very big junior program in the country. And they said that they were contacted by USA Racquetball about how that might hurt, um, you know, the junior participation. And this individual said, they said, okay, we'll take that into consideration. And that was it. And they weren't thrilled with the date because a lot of people aren't out of school. But listen, USA Racquetball, they're doing the best they can. Uh, you know, we, we were all dealt a tough hand in 2020. Connor Shane and the crew over there, they're, they're working hard to make this event happen. I'm sure they'll have, you know, a layout and a format, exactly what the answers are, the dates, singles, doubles, juniors. And, uh, you know, hopefully it works out. Um, if not, hopefully we see you at some tournament anyway. So with that, Ellie, thank you so much as always. Uh, Scotty Mack, thank you in the backgrounds. All of our guests tonight. Uh, Kane, thank you. Can't wait to get working with you, you know, on this. This is going to be amazing. Uh, Jordan Ellis, uh, congratulations on your bat mitzvah once again. Veronica, I love you. Thank you for all the work you do. To the fans, to the players, to the sponsors, to the supporters, Keith Miner, we love you. We thank you so much. We keep racquetball going, and we will see you next week uh, on Beyond the Court. Have a great week. Thank you.